Um, okay, so so I will start, Sunil. If you if your problem is solved, please please uh, join me. Uh, so uh, our today's talk is uh, is about the Apache unicorn, the state of the union, and uh, the future. Um, uh, we prepared this talk uh, together with uh, with Sunil. I hope he will be able to to join us <clears throat> as soon as uh, as he will solve uh, the permission issue. So uh, a little bit of introduction. Uh, so uh, uh, I am Julia King of Martin. I am working uh, at Cloudera as an engineer. I joined the company uh, almost four years ago. Uh, when I joined, uh, I started to work on the Apache Uzi. Then I spent uh, a couple of months on the Apache Yarn. And then starting from last year in March, I am part uh, of the Unicorn team. Uh, I am working together with Sunil. He is an engineering manager at Cloudera. Uh, he has contributed to, to a bunch of uh, Apache projects, for example, the Apache Hadoop, Submarine, Unicorn. He is also a committer and PMC member uh, in this project. And uh, his focus was uh, mostly on the resource scheduling aspect. And here in the slide, you, you can also find our, our contact information. So feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. OK, uh, the agenda for, for our today's speech. Uh, in the beginning, we, I will, uh, uh, I will uh, uh, talk a little about uh, the need of the new scheduler for Kubernetes, uh, then, uh, then I will, um, uh, I will uh, try to answer the question why, what is Apache Unicorn Scheduler? Then I will, um, I will show you the unicorn, the main unicorn features. Uh, after that, uh, uh, we will, we will uh, see a little bit. Uh, of our roadmap, and uh, I will present our our uh, future plans. And at the end, uh, I will talk a little about uh, about the community. So uh, the big data in our cloud ecosystem. So. Uh, Actually, today's uh, resource management uh, landscapes uh, has to account for uh, hybrid multi-cloud use cases. And in this, uh, in this uh, platforms, Kubernetes is a very popular choice to manage these containerized workloads across uh, different platforms. <clears throat> and uh, um, as a consequence of this, uh, the industry actually has started to to move all their their batch uh, workloads to to the Kubernetes system, and uh, uh, all, all these things uh, lead to to a need for a unified architecture for handling both the on-prem cases and also the multi-cloud and uh, and uh, hybrid cloud uh, parts as well. Uh, with all these aspects, uh, there there has been a lot of gaps in the scheduling <clears throat> uh, with respect to the cloud uh, native scheduling. So in the the computing in the big data world is uh, is is complex and is way more different than than it was on prem. So we have long running, we have to handle long running and also stateful services like, such as uh, the HBase, Hive, Flink, Kafka. We also have to handle the batch workloads. For example, the MR, Spark, Tez, and Tez of TensorFlow uh, workloads. And uh, what were the gaps in the scheduling? Uh, so until now, we find that uh, there was a gap of the first class application concept. So uh, most of the scheduler are handling uh, 
are doing the scheduling pod by pod. Uh, but uh, but we didn't find any any way to uh, to handle the link or the dependencies between different pods. Uh, we had lack of fine grain capacity management. Also, uh, also the application and the tasks uh, got uh, allocated in in a disordered manner. Uh, we found that there was no resource fairness uh, assured between the different tenants, and also the throughput and the scheduling latency was also a problem. Uh, here are the challenges what uh, what we encountered when we when we wanted to to run the batch jobs in uh, Kubernetes. Uh, we found that uh, there was a, a high latency, so around uh, 100 seconds, uh, while we were using the default scheduler on, on a single node uh, Kubernetes cluster uh, in case of uh, of larger volumes or or a bigger load. Uh, the fair sharing was also a problem. So uh, large batch fair sharing in the same resource pool was uh, unpredictable while we were using the default scheduler. Uh, we, we also faced the need for an elastic and hierarchical priority management for jobs in the Kubernetes and also a richer and online user visibility uh, into into the internals of uh, the scheduling behavior. And another aspect was the simplified layers of controllers uh, with a custom uh, Kubernetes scheduler. Uh, uh, in, the in the next couple of slides, I will give you a brief introduction to the unicorn scheduler, and then we will go through, uh, through the main um, uh, the main features of uh, of the scheduler. So, what is uh, what is Unicorn? Uh, Unicorn is an open source, lightweight, and universal resource scheduler for container orchestrator systems. In other words, it is responsible for assigning resources from machines to the submitted applications. As I mentioned, it was designed to uh, to be a universal scheduler, what means that we want to make it possible to implement uh, diff to to extend it with different implementations running against the same core system. However, until now we focused on um, on the Kubernetes side. So right now we have only the Kubernetes shim layer implemented, but in the future it is it is very easy to add and another layer, for example, a YARN implementation. Now, the Unicorn is, uh, is quite simple to use. It is deployed as a stateless service in a Kubernetes system. Uh, we have the core and the shim side now deployed together, but in the future, we want to make possible to run multiple shims against the same core. Uh, recently, the deployment consists of two services, the scheduler itself and the admission controller. This latest one is responsible to route all the pods to uh, to Unicorn and also for some for doing some validation. Uh, Unicorn can run uh, together with uh, with the default scheduler or with with whatever else scheduler as a second one, or it can also completely replace the scheduler in the Kubernetes system. And it also works together very well with the cluster autoscaler, so it can uh, handle and it can, it can follow the changes uh, related to the node scale up and down. Okay. Uh, Sorry, uh, let's have a quick look at the high level architecture of the Unicorn. Uh, we have four major com modules in Unicorn. We have the interface, the Unicorn core, the shim layers, and we also have a web UI. The scheduler interface is, is the abstract layer. 
uh, to which uh, all the resource management platforms, in our case, the Kubernetes uh, is speaking with. And the communication is, uh, is via gRPC programming language bindings. Uh, the main module or the brain of the unicorn is, uh, is the unicorn core. Uh, this one encapsulates all the scheduling logic and uh, algorithms. It collects resource information from the internet resource management system uh, platform. And it is also responsible for handling the resource allocation requests. Uh, another layer is the shim layer, the implementation, the Kubernetes shim in our case. This one is responsible for translating uh, the whole system resource information and also the resource requests uh, via this scheduler interface API. And uh, it is sending them to the scheduler core. After them, the scheduler decision, after a scheduler decision is made in the core, also the shim will handle the actual pod and container bindings. Uh, the current shim supports two types of deployment. Uh, it can be deployed on-prem or, or on cloud instances as well. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we also have a scheduler UI. It is, uh, it is a web UI, which provides a simple way for the managed nodes, the resources, the application, and, uh, and the queues. And now let's go on and uh, have a quick look uh, uh, at the Unicorn main features. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, there are uh, a couple of gaps in the resource scheduling nowadays. So Unicorn tries to fill these gaps with a couple of features. Uh, these features, uh, I will present these features very briefly in the next couple of slides. Uh, the first one is uh, the app aware scheduling. So compared to, to the Kubernetes default scheduler, that actually is doing the scheduling pod by pod without handling any connections between them. In Unicorn, we have the application concept. Uh, so this means that uh, while using Unicorn, we are able to recognize if more pods are, if more pods belong to the same application, and uh, also it recognizes uh, the users, application queues uh, while doing the scheduling. And it will also consider a lot more, more factors during the scheduling steps. Example, the resource, the ordering, uh, the users, etc. And uh, basically this means that it makes possible to handle all the jobs uh, in a batch system. Uh, and another key difference uh, between uh, Unicorn and the default scheduler, for example, is that in Unicorn, we support uh, uh, hierarchical queue structures. So it is very easy to map an organization structure to, uh, to our queue, internal queue structure. With Unicorn, we can also perform quota enforcement by setting up quotas for, for each queues. Uh, we can set uh, guaranteed and also max resources for each of them. Uh, and during the scheduling, this means that the applications are assigned to a queue, but there is no resource consumption until the application is started. So if we have some prerequisites, what are not uh, already met when the application is submitted, the application will sit in that queue. Uh, without consuming the resources only after this, all these uh, prerequisites are met. Uh, also, it, it is important to, uh, to be elastic in terms of the queues and the resource quotas. So by leveraging uh, the minimum and maximum fields for the queue capacity, we can define how, how elastic, elastic we would like to be in terms of uh, resource consumption for, for, each, uh, for each of the tenants. Okay, we, we, we can also define priorities between these applications and we can queue them to determine which application uh, we want to, to get executed first. 
uh, we can define the ordering using different uh, sorting policies for each leaf queue. And we can do it through the queue configuration. Each leaf queue can uh, can use uh, can have a different uh, policy configured. Uh, right now in Unicorn we support three policies. What can be configured? The first one is the FIFO. Uh, this one is quite simple. It uses the principle of first in, first out. So the first submitted application will be handled first. Another one, the state of error policy. Uh, this one monitors the application state and it uh, tries to limit uh, how many applications will, will be starting on accepted state. And also we have the fair queue sorting policy. Uh, this one is monitoring the resource usage and uh, the ordering is, is uh, it will be according to, to the resource request of the applications. I also put uh, an, a fourth uh, sorting policy. It is the priority one. Uh, this one is not implemented yet in Unicorn, but it is there in, in our roadmap. Uh, we would like to make it possible for the users to, uh, to define some priorities for their application. And when we are doing the sorting and, uh, and the scheduling to, to take into account this priority. Uh, this one is also related to the preemption, but is on our roadmap, so it's not fully implemented yet. Okay, so uh, the resource fairness. Oh, sorry, I skipped the slide. Uh, the resource fairness or the scheduling fairness. Uh, this is uh, a little bit linked to the job ordering and the policies we can define in Unicorn. Uh, in this uh, in this diagram and in this uh, chart, you can see an experiment. It was made with simulated Kubernetes cluster using two two thousand and four thousand nodes, where we when we defined four queues, all of them having different uh, resource limits. Uh, after it, a bunch of jobs were submitted with uh, different resource requests to the different queues, in and uh, and in the second chart, it can be seen how the scheduling was made. So it uh, it was made in a linear way. So uh, uh, so it was. Uh, uh, we can say that uh, that there was scheduling in a linear or in a fair way uh, regarding to uh, to the resources. Okay, the another two. Uh, main features are the resource reservation and the Spark operator integration. Uh, in Unicorn, we support uh, the reservation. What means that if a pod uh, cannot be allocated, Unicorn will try to to reserve it to a qualified node. And in the next scheduling cycles, it will uh, tentatively allocate it on the reserve node. Actually, it, it will be handled before uh, the rest of the nodes. This is very useful when we want to avoid these spots to, to get starved and to just sit there and wait for the resources. The another one is the Spark Operator integration. Uh, so by leveraging the Unicorn's application management framework, now we have a better integration with, uh, with Spark Operator. Uh, this means that Unicorn watches the Spark CRD resources and it will react when necessary. It is totally transparent to use Unicorn with Spark Operator, so no extra configuration is needed for this one. Uh, the another main feature is uh, is the gang scheduling. Uh, this one uh, refers to the mechanism to schedule correlated tasks in uh, all or nothing manner. In other words, uh, this means that the resource scheduler instead instead of uh, taking and scheduling task by task it uh, it looks overall how many slots do we need for the whole application to run and it will assign uh, the resources to satisfy the, dem the demands altogether 
or if uh, there are no enough resources, it will postpone the scheduling until it will reach uh, this state. Uh, for solving this problem in Unicorn, we introduced the task groups to define the gangs for the application. That means that when an application uh, has some task groups defined, it will be gang scheduled. So instead of directly assigning resources for the applications pod by pod, the scheduling procedure will be different. And it will be, it will consist of four phases. In the first step, we, we prepare the application. That means that the uh, unicorn will generate some placeholder pods with the same resource request as the real ones. Then uh, we are trying to do the resource reservation. In this phase, unicorn uh, allocates resources to the placeholder and uh, it will wait for all of them to be allocated. Once all of the placeholders uh, are allocated, Unicorn starts to allocate resources to the real to the real pods by swapping the placeholder pods. At the end, we also have uh, a cleanup phase. It can easily happen that uh, that we have some over reservations, so we have more placeholders than real real pods uh, submitted. Uh, in this case, all these pods will be garbage collected. This feature is. Uh, is very, very useful for mainly for the Spark application. And in this, um, this second diagram, we can see how it is working in case of, uh, of a Spark application. So when a Spark application is submitted, the driver executor, uh, uh, <laughs> the driver pod is created. Then instead of, uh, of uh, accepting and creating the, exec the executor pods, uh, Unicorn, it will create some placeholder pods. And at this point, the upscale is triggered if needed. Uh, then the driver pod will be allocated after it, after, after it, it will be started and the executor, if, if all the placeholders are, are running, the executor pods are, are created and they will replace uh, the, place, the, re the placeholder pods. And at the end, we will have the application running and succeeded. Um, this gang scheduling feature and how how it is useful for the Spark application uh, is a little bit more complex. So uh, way, way together with Sharon, we'll have a, a different session for for how how Unicorn can be used together with, um, with the Spark applications. So here you can find the details of that session. It will be interesting and uh, join join if you can. So now uh, let's see a little bit uh, the present and the future of the unicorn. Uh, as, a, as a short summary, so as we've seen in the previous slide, uh, Unicorn is positioning itself between the cluster deployment uh, model and the application. So we can say that um, that it acts uh, like a glue when we run different workloads on Kubernetes, no matter what, what is uh, the underlying uh, uh, cluster deployment model. So we can have on-prem or on-cloud deployment. From Unicorn perspective, it doesn't matter. Okay, related to our releases. Until now, we have four releases, but here I will talk only about uh, the last three ones. So uh, the 0 0.9.0, .0 version was released in August 2020. And in these versions were implemented most of the unicorn's main features. Uh, actually, these are the ones I just introduced for you. The next 0 .0 0.10.0 release was uh, uh, was created this year in April. And in this version, we introduced the gang scheduling and also a first uh, phase of uh, the application CRD, um, what makes possible to monitor the application's life cycle, not only the pod's status. And also in the release, we introduced some uh, improvements in the, the Unicorn Web UI. 
uh, the latest release is the 0 0.11.0. .0. This is a very fresh release. It, it was uh, released recently in August. And in this one, uh, uh, we, focus, we, we focused on stabilizing the gang scheduling feature. We also introduced some uh, web and REST API improvements and also the Spark operator, inter operator integration was introduced in this release. Uh, as you can see, in terms of, uh, of releases, we are trying to keep a three months, uh, three months release uh, cadence. Uh, a little bit about, uh, about our community and our future. So we have open source the uh, unicorn since July 2019. And at this point, uh, most of the contributors were from Cloudera. Now we have contributors, committers, and also consumers from different companies such as Apple, Alibaba, Lyft, Visa, and also we have some individual students contributing uh, to Unicorn. Uh, and yes, we are constantly focusing in, in growing and in growing our, our community. Uh, within Cloudera, we ship Unicorn as part of uh, our Cloudera data experience product. Where, uh, where it is used mostly with uh, Spark applications. In terms of our futures and our releases, soon we will start to do the planning for the 1.0 release. I think that for now, uh, we became enough stable for, uh, for releasing uh, this major version. And also we started to create the documentation for uh, graduating from the incubator status and to become a top level Apache project. Here in the slides, in the top of the slides, you can find our, uh, our uh, uh, main uh, web page and you can find a lot of uh, useful information. This is versioned, so you can, be, you can check uh, what are the new features in each of the release. And we also have uh, uh, have regular, regular community meetings in two different time zones. So you can find information related to these meetings uh, in our website as well. Also, we are presenting the Artifact Hub. So if you would like to just play around with Unicorn and try it out, you don't need to, uh, to check out uh, our source, source code. Just go to the Artifact Hub and uh, install it from, uh, from the latest HAM charts. Uh, so, uh, very briefly, this was uh, our presentation for today. Uh, Sunil, I don't know if uh, if you are here now or not. It seems not. Then, uh, thank you for uh, for your attention. And if you if you have some questions, I will I will try to answer them. I can see that we, that we have one question for Michael. So he he's asking if uh, if uh, does Unicorn support scheduling on top of multiple Kubernetes clusters? If not, it is on the roadmap. Uh, as far as I know, it is not supporting it right now. So it can handle uh, so one one shim and core deployment. It can handle one cluster. Uh, and it is not yet in our uh, roadmap for for the next release, but uh, but it would be good to have it and to be able to handle it in the long term.
Okay, so we have two more uh, two more questions. So Ivan C is asking if does the Kubernetes native scheduler need to be disabled, or that there is no race between different scheduler? No, it uh, it doesn't need to be disabled. It can it can run. Uh, uh, together with uh, with the default scheduler. In this case, Unicorn will handle only those pods uh, uh, where where the scheduler name is set to Unicorn. And if uh, if uh, if we install it uh, together with uh, with the admission controller. Uh, that uh, that would mean that the admission controller will, in, will inject uh, the unicorn scheduler name for every every application, and in this case, all of the pods will be handled by by unicorn. So very shortly, no, it doesn't need to to be disabled. Uh, and we have on another question from Adrian Ramos. Uh, has dependencies Unicorn with Kubernetes version? In example, Unicorn 0 0.9 running with Kubernetes 1.19 and uh, 1.20 or similar. Yes. Yes, uh, we are defining the, the supported Kubernetes versions for, uh, uh, for each hour. Uh, uh, for each hour uh, Unicorn release and uh, and we are trying to uh, to support uh, in 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 every hour release the newest uh, Kubernetes versions. For example, uh, our 0 0.11.0 release supporting. I have to I have to cheat a little bit. Uh, Yes, so uh, so the supported Kubernetes versions, for example, for our 0 0.11.0 release are uh, starting from 1.17, is supporting 1.18 and 1.19. Uh, we cannot say for sure that we support the newer versions as well. Uh, we are doing the testing with these versions. Okay, another question from uh, Erika Lin. Does Unicorn interface with uh, Kubernetes through a plugin, or do you need a forked version of Kubernetes to run Unicorn? <clears throat> uh, forked version to run Unicorn. Uh, no, is 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 not. Uh, It's not working through a plugin, so we have uh, we have some internal uh, uh, Kubernetes dependencies. But uh, for being able to to start and to run Unicorn, you don't need to to fork uh, any version of uh, Kubernetes. So you just uh, you just uh, run Unicorn without uh, without having to to do anything with a specific uh, Kubernetes version. I don't know if I answered your question, Erika. If 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 not, then uh, then can you be a little bit more? Can you add some more details related to your question? So with our interaction with uh, Unicorn, we are using the Kubernetes APIs. Okay. 
people communicating with uh, with the underlying Kubernetes. And yes, no plugin. I think that I have one more minute, so it's enough time for for at least one more question. Yes, and we have we have another question from Erika. Are there uh, benchmark tests to valid test to validate how good the scheduler is? I know you mentioned created synthetic workloads, but is there a commonly accepted workload to test against and compare? Yes, we we have some uh, some benchmark tests. I can I can share some results here in the chat. Uh, but these tests were I think were were made uh, more than one year ago. So now we are working on doing some tests again because, because since then there is a lot of a lot of things what changed in Unicorn and also in um, in the default scheduler. Uh, I will share here uh, our benchmark uh, results for you. Okay, I think that my time is up. Okay, so I cannot find right now in a couple of seconds the benchmark results, Erika. Is it? I can. I can. Uh, I can share the results uh, here in the chat after. Uh, after the meeting, if it is okay, or feel free to to ping me for that. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for your questions and uh, for your for your attention. Uh, and uh, enjoying the rest of the rest of the talks. Bye bye.